So this will be Q&A video number 18, but before I get into the first series of questions from Jacob Kowalski, I gotta give you a little bit of a backstory so you understand what the fuck I'm talking about here. Now Jacob had said he separates his training from his stretching. My question to him was, why do you do what you do? His response, because stretching is important to him, and when he's pumped, it limits his ability to do what's important to him. So while most people might not care about why Jacob's doing what he does, the underlying principle here is something we could all benefit from. Prioritize what's important to you and remove whatever it is that's limiting you. If the training is limiting you from doing the stretches that are important to you, then obviously, yes, you're gonna to wanna to modify the way you do what you do to promote the response you're looking for. One of the things he said, the rear hand clasp stretch that he likes to do is limited when his muscles are pumped. So I understand your logic for separating the training and the stretching. I understand the rationale, I agree with it. So keep doing what you're doing. One of the things I wanna to touch on real quick, in the last video, Jacob had asked me, can stretching create damage and increase recovery requirements? The answer is yes. I might not have directly said that, but I thought it was pretty clear when I said, muscles are like an elastic band. If you pull on them and you let them go, they contract. If you pull them beyond a certain threshold, they snap. Same thing with stretching your muscles. Not that they'll snap, although they could, but if they exceed a certain threshold when being stretched, you can damage them. So hopefully that clears that up for you. Now, one more thing Jacob said before I move on is that the purpose of the stretching was to induce a state of relaxation and also prevent his flexibility from getting worse and maintain it where it's at. Now, these are two separate goals and separate goals require separate strategies. If the goal is to induce a state of relaxation, then you do what you need to to facilitate that. If, however, the purpose of the stretching is to prevent your flexibility from getting worse, I would argue that's a total fucking waste of time only because you would get a greater return on investment by including loaded stretching into your strategy or training through a full range of motion. So it comes down to why are you doing what you're doing? This isn't to suggest that you get a zero return on your investment because the placebo effect is very real. If you believe something's gonna work for you, it will to some degree. However, if you could get a greater return by investing roughly the same amount, I would argue that what you're doing is a total fucking waste of time. Why wouldn't you want to invest in a way where you get the greatest return on your investment? Now, Danny Moore wants my opinion as it relates to a couple different things in relation to the bench press. Number one, does the overhead press have much carryover to the bench press? Now, same principle that we talked about with Jacob prioritizing what's important to him, same thing here. If the bench press is important to you, prioritize it. Don't do something and hope it makes you better at something else. If you got better at bench pressing by including overhead presses into your strategy, there's a reason for that. That reason is likely because that exercise addresses a weak link in your chain. So you wanna get good at something, you do that thing. Then you gotta assess where your weak links are and include exercise into your strategy to account for that. But if you wanna get good at something, you do that thing that you wanna get good at. Don't do something else and hope it makes you better at another thing. He also wanted my opinion on bar path. Should it be straight or arched? My opinion depends on what you wanna work. Because if you change the mechanics of the movement, you change the direction of effort, you're changing the recruitment pattern. To press the bar straight up, the elbows need to be flared at the side. The risk of shoulder impingement is higher, but once again, it's just a risk. This puts the sternal head of the pec in more direct opposition of the resistance. When the elbows are tucked to the side and you're arching as you press up, this puts the clavicular head of the pec in more direct opposition of the resistance. So depending on where you wanna work should determine how you actually do the exercise. Now the last question here, I'm never one to bullshit people. I never just make something up and be like, yeah, this is the answer. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you, I don't know the fucking answer. So the question is, what has a greater capacity for strength, the delts or the triceps? I don't know. My answer would be, comes down to your capacity to recruit, but then your question in response to that would likely be all things being equal, let's say I have the capacity to recruit both just as equally, what has the greater potential? I don't know. I will say this though, your questions revolve around the bench press. I would be more inclined to invest time and effort into training the triceps because they will contribute to a greater degree in bench pressing than maybe the delts would and the delts get worked with everything else. But as it relates to the specifics of the question, I don't fucking know. If you like the information, share it, click the fucking button at the bottom of the screen you're looking at, subscribe to the channel, support me, and I'm going to keep on bringing it.